Hello and welcome to my YouTube video. This video is titled Setting the Touch Response on a Yamaha E463 Keyboard for Dummies. In other words, for people who may know absolutely nothing about touch response and want to learn. My name is Maury Reese. This YouTube is for people who are thinking about buying a PSR E463 keyboard or people who have bought an E463 and are still learning how to use it. If this describes you, keep watching. I know a lot of you can't read this if you're using an iPhone or an Android phone. This is a list of the 31 YouTubes that I have put up over the last 11 months. And every one of these YouTubes teaches you something about the E463 keyboard. So there are, there are 16 hours of instruction on how to use the PSR E463 keyboards. This is my hobby. Uh, I love doing this. I love teaching people how to get the most out of that little keyboard that they bought. And by the way, I will list all of these YouTubes in the comments below. So what does touch response do? Very simply put, touch response makes the keyboard play louder when you hit the keys faster or harder. For example, let me clap here. If I clap slowly, it sounds like this. If I increase the speed, it gets louder. And if I increase it some more, it gets louder still. And if I increase it some more, it really gets loud. So the faster my hands move, the louder the music is, the louder my clap. And that's exactly what touch response does. The faster you press that key, the harder you hit it, the louder the keyboard plays. So let me start with the three steps to setting the touch response on an E463 keyboard. And the good news is, this is simple. Step number one, press the function button. And it's right here. Now it says function on top and underneath it it says file control. And you see this little circle with a down arrow? There are 11 buttons on this keyboard that have this little down arrow circle. And what this means is this button has two functions, two different things it can do. If you just reach out and tap it, it's a function button. If you reach out and press and hold it for a couple of seconds, then it turns into a file control. So 11 buttons on this keyboard have dual functions. Tap it or press and hold. In this case, I just want you to reach out and tap it. Don't hold it, just tap it. Step two, use the category buttons, which are right here, to select the function 010, and this is what it should look like. So you're going to sit here and punch this button, and as you do, you're going to be watching the screen right here, and it'll go function 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then you'll get to 10, and it should say touch res, okay? Touch response, that's what that stands for. So this is... Just keep punching this button as you watch the screen until you get to number 10. And by the way, it doesn't stay up here very long. It only stays on the screen, oh, two or three seconds, and then it goes away, and I'll show you what it does in, in the next slide. So that's number two. Use the categories, dial or punch in function number 10. When you get there, then you're going to use this rotary dial to select one of the four touch response settings. So here's the first big information. There are only four settings. And by the way, 
This is what the screen will look like a second or two after the touch res goes away. It will say soft one. So let me show you what are the four settings. The first one is soft one, medium number two, hard number three, and fixed number four. I'm going to explain exactly what each one of these is, but in a sense, the, the name tells you what you have to do to get it to play harder. Okay? So soft response allows maximum loudness to be played with light key pressure. Okay? So you don't have to hit it very hard to get it to play loud if you set it in soft number one. And who would this be good for? Well, for example, maybe you're a child uh, and you have little fingers and they're not real strong. So setting this in soft one would probably be a good idea if you want to be able to play loudly, but you don't have a lot of strength in your fingers. Or maybe you're a small lady or even a small man who doesn't have a lot of strength in their fingers. On the other extreme, Maybe you're just the opposite. Maybe you're an elderly person and perhaps you have arthritis or something that uh, stiffness in your fingers and it's hard for you to press the keys very hard. You would also probably want to set this up in soft one so that you can make it play loud without having to hit it really hard. Soft one. Medium number two produces what I'll call a standard piano keyboard response. So I would argue if you grew up playing piano, and my mother started making me take piano lessons when I was six years old, and I took them all through high school. If you're a piano player, setting this to medium two means that your E463 keyboard will play and respond pretty much like the piano did that you learned to play on. So piano players are going to love this. How about number three? Hard response. This requires a strong key press to produce high volume. I had a friend in college. He was a music major. He was going to be a composer. And he used to give concerts and recitals. This guy beat that piano to death. Everything was triple and quadruple forte for him. He just pounded on the piano. He didn't know how to play softly. It wasn't in him. So if that's what you're like, if you're one of these people that loves to pound on the keyboard, then maybe setting this in hard number three would be for you. One more setting to go. Fixed response. This one's easy. All the notes are played at the same volume no matter how hard the keyboard is played. You know what? This is exactly what an organ does. So if you grew up playing an organ or that's what you've been playing for several years and now you're moving into the E463, if you set this to fixed number four, your E463 will respond just like that organ did. In other words, with an organ, it doesn't matter how fast or how hard you press those keys. I know. I owned a couple of organs. There's a volume control pedal down at your feet, and that's how you make it louder or softer. Banging on an organ doesn't do anything. So if you want your keyboard to play just like an organ, set it to fixed number four. Now, this is really important. The touch response setting only affects the main voice. So those of you who've owned this keyboard and played with it know that you can set up a dual voice and you can set up a split voice and you have a style that you play with your left hands and uh, you may be setting up a groove. None of those are affected. The only thing touch response affects is the main voice. And I think you have 200 and 200 and, or, uh, I'm sorry, 759 of them. 
759 different voices. So touch response only doesn't do anything to the dual, the split, or the style. Now, the touch response is technically called a velocity response. It responds to how fast you press down a key. And another way of thinking of this, how fast or, or how hard, it's kind of the same to me as if I press it hard, I'm pressing it down fast. And I mention this because if you buy more expensive keyboards, for example, my Tyros 5, it has velocity response, but it also has something called aftertouch. And what that means is, once I hit a note, if I sit there and just press down on the note even harder after I played it, it makes another sound. That's not what this keyboard does. All this keyboard has is velocity response. So you may read about aftertouch response. That's not in this keyboard. It only responds to how fast or how hard you hit that key. That's it. Now I want to tell you right up front that not every one of those 700 and some odd voices responds to touch response. For example, none of the 16 organ voices respond to touch response. And that's good because an organ doesn't have touch response. Every time I play a note, it's just as loud as every other note I play, and I have to use the volume pedal. So if you want your keyboard to play every note exactly the same, put it to number four, fixed. But what I'm telling you here is, even though you may set it up to number one soft, if you choose an organ as your main voice, you don't have any touch response at all that will affect the loudness of your keyboard. So don't be disappointed because there's lots and lots of main voices that simply don't respond to this touch response. It's just the way they are. So let's go live and let's listen to the touch response live on the E463 keyboard. And this is what I'm going to let you listen to. I'm going to go in and I'm going to play the keyboard as a piano. And uh, I'll show you the different settings and what that does. Then I'm going to call up a flute as the main voice. And I'll let you listen to the settings of a flute. Then I'm going to call up an electric bass guitar, and we'll listen to that in the different touch responses. Then I'm going to call up a drum set, and we'll listen to how the touch response affects some of the drums. And finally, I'll call up a Hammond organ, and I'll let you listen to how the keyboard does not respond to touch response once you set up an organ. Okay? Let's go live to the keyboard and listen to this. Here I am at the E463 keyboard and I'm ready to demonstrate the touch response. I've set my keyboard up as a piano. And I've already gone in and I have dialed in soft number one on the touch response. So I'm going to start playing as softly as I can and I will gradually increase the speed uh, and how hard I hit. And you can hear, I hope, that the piano does get louder the harder I hit it. So here is soft. Play it a little louder, a little harder. A little harder. About as hard as I can get. Okay, that's soft one. 
Ears soft too. Okay, here is, uh, that was medium two, not soft two. Here is hard three. Here is fixed four. I'm trying to play as soft as I can. Now as hard as I can. So no matter how hard or how soft I play, It stays the same, whatever volume I have set. Okay, that's fixed four. So now let me change. I'm going to go to a flute. And I'll go back to soft one. And I'll start by playing it as softly as I can. This is voice number 134. A little harder. And hard. really changes when you really hit it hard it ch changes the flute dramatically okay that's soft one here is medium two I can get it to make that sharp sound but it takes a lot more here is hard three how hard I press I can't get that uh, explosive sound uh, and here is fixed four once again it doesn't matter how hard or how soft I hit it it's all the same all right let's go to a uh, drum voice number two three eight Okay, and I'll go back to touch response soft, and here we go. So you can hear that the not only does it get louder, but it changes. Okay, so that's the drums. You can definitely hear the effect. Now if I go to fixed four, no matter what I do, I can't make it any louder, any softer. It is fixed at whatever volume I have set on my keyboard. Okay, so that's drums. Let's go to bass guitar, uh, voice 053. And we will go to touch response setting 
one. So it definitely responds. Uh, let's go to uh, medium. Here is hard. And I'm really pressing it. And fixed. No matter how hard I press, I just can't, or how soft. It's absolutely uniform. It's always the same. All right, let's go to an organ. Voice uh, zero, two, six. And I will go to touch response soft, number one. Pressing it as soft as I can. little harder, a little harder, hard as I can. <laughs> You see, it has no effect whatsoever. I am set on soft one, and because it's an organ, uh, the, the organs do not have touch response. It was never built into them. It's impossible to do them. Okay? So, that is touch response. The important thing to know is some of the voices are affected by it, and rather dramatically so, and some voices, it has no effect whatsoever. So of the 700 and some odd voices, as you're applying this, don't be surprised if it doesn't have any effect on it. That's just the nature of this keyboard and those voices. So I hope you have found this helpful. If so, leave me a note. Until I see you again, thank you for watching, and be well.